Stocks chop, iron ore plunges, and Treasury Secretary Mnuchin says tax reform is close. You believe that? Let's talk about that and the rest of these markets as we start the show. Well, I'm going to sit and I'm going to do a silly show. And I know all my fans want to learn how to make some dough. I've been cruising up and down for trades each and every night. And with my iPhone chatting, I know we're going to get it just right. I'll get inside your mind, we'll have a real good time. We're going to trade today, we got to trade today. Go ahead, sleep. Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the S. Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week and a look forward to what might happen in the next week. And hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout the show. Well, the stock market chopped this week, uh, gaining a little bit of ground. Uh, that's despite some downside swoons that we saw in midweek, especially on Wednesday. The Dow took a big hit as IBM really got crushed after its earnings report. Man, that stock has really been disappointing uh, investors as it seems like on and on they have been missing on revenues. Uh, tough uh, world that they're in, uh, a lot of competition in the cloud category. So uh, that stock gets hit and we'll show that one a little bit later on. Investors uh, continued to be nervous overall. Um, we saw iron ore or plunge. Man, it's been uh, uh, just a huge decline uh, in iron ore as it had, well, uh, about uh, regained about um, a half of its value uh, as it rallied from the 60s to the 90s uh, on the Donald Trump hopes. Uh, and then it falls all the way back to the 60s as if the first sign of the Trump trade falling apart is right there in iron ore, and we saw the material stocks and steels under a lot of pressure. However, relief came uh, on Thursday as um, the president uh, came out with an executive order that said that he wants to look at um, steel imports, uh, start an investigation, and of course looking at the China dumping. And uh, that gave the steel stocks a big lift. That helped the markets on Thursday. So that's the kind of market we had this week. Lots of stuff uh, in the background. News is rhetoric really picks up about uh, North Korea and uh, a lot of saber rattling going on there and now some negative talk about Iran also. So uh, lots of stuff to get investors nervous. Still they were able to put on a big rally uh, on Thursday and overall that uh, put the markets in decent shape for the week. Uh, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin comes out, also helps the markets. As he says, they're pretty close on bringing forward um, tax reform. Um, if you ask me, it's wishful thinking and maybe a bunch of propaganda, and you might just might label it a bunch of crap, uh, because they cannot move that forward without a health care bill. And Mnuchin says that on Thursday, but then just two days before he said, that they have to get the health care bill done before they can do anything. So a lot of double talk out there, and who knows what to uh, really believe. Really, uh, uh, POTUS uh, seems to be sending out his minions and making some pretty unrealistic statements as um, he might be able to figure out a way to get something passed in the House, but man, that Senate is going to stand in his way. Uh, got lots of stuff coming up forward as we look, of course, at a government that's out of money and uh, try as they try to figure out how to raise that debt ceiling and I'm going to say more about that in the next week. Um, the stock market, well, it's you know, had a decent week. The NASDAQ, the Russell, they had good weeks up about a percent and a half to two percent. Big gains there actually. S&P 500 and the Dow, they were more laggards. Of course, IBM hurting the Dow and they were only up fractionally on the week. Bond market uh, continued strong, ended up with small gains, but man, it had a big up move on Tuesday, seemingly coming out of nowhere. Really could see no news there, but we seem to get into periods where we get these flight to safety moves in different markets 
gold uh, overall showing that also uh, as it's much stronger than any of the other commodities out there. Uh, and if you look uh, at the bonds, uh, take a look at the two-year yields, 2.2%, a very, very keen number on the chart. Uh, especially uh, looking at important moving averages. So that that's an important area where we're going to be looking at, around that 2.1.5%, 2 2.2% uh, uh, area on the 10-year yields. Dollar, uh, it's a, a down week. We had been kind of looking for a pullback in the dollar. The key really is, is now this is an important weekend coming up as we have the French elections. And I'm really getting a feeling that um, Marine Le Pen is going to make a strong showing. If that's the case, then the euro currency is going to take a hit. Because, well, she's anti-European Union, wants to go back to the franc. Uh, and uh, the uh, dollar um, under that condition would get a pop to the upside. So important weekend, can get some pretty big movement Sunday, Monday, uh, Sunday night and Monday uh, regarding uh, what's going on with these uh, French elections. So for the week, gold and silver, well, uh, gold fell uh, small. Silver got crushed, 65 cents. That does not speak very well for uh, the hopes for economic growth. And copper's been extraordinarily weak also. These are the uh, metals that would do well if there was really going to be some economic growth. And man, look around at all the commodities. They are overall weak. The grain markets have been uh, extraordinarily weak also. So on top of that big plunge in iron ore, um, you really have to be looking at um, what's the sign of economic growth? And another part of that is oil. Oil was in free fall this week. Man, down over $4 on the week. And now on Friday, OPEC comes out and say, well, they need to uh, extend their cuts. Uh, and uh, so th there's a sign that that oil market is still struggling and that the glut still remains. Uh, and that's why they're talking about um, extending these uh, uh, production cuts that, uh, that they have made some months ago. So overall, we've seen some pretty weak um, commodity markets and choppy stock market and firmness in the flight to safety type market. So pretty interesting story when you think of that. Recently, I received an email uh, from uh, Donna H. Thank you, Donna. Donna sends me some nice stuff and uh, one of my uh, very valued members. And uh, she said, said to me, you know, she had seen some analysis regarding a rare chart formation and wanted to check it out with me. And that is the three peaks and the domed house formation. That's actually a pretty uh, famous stock formation uh, credited to uh, George Lindsay from 1971 as he was doing some stock market analysis. And then, uh, you know, and we talked about that a little bit. And then uh, uh, this week, uh, Jeff Hirsch uh, the son of Yale Hirsch, pretty uh, famous uh, from the stock market almanac, he came out with the same analysis. And he said he thinks that, well, maybe it's not the big uh, negative that this pattern has brought in the past, but maybe 20% on the downside for the stock market. That's pretty negative, isn't it? I thought I would take a couple moments here and share that stock pattern with you so you could get an idea. Famous because... It was the pattern that he was studying, um, that's uh, George Lindsay, uh, back uh, around uh, looking at the 1929 stock market. So I'm going to share a, a couple slides with you, and here are a few actually, and give you an idea of what um, Donna shared with me and what um, uh, uh, Yale, uh, not Yale, Jeff Hirsch uh, was talking about this week and uh, what George Lindsay uh, had uh, discovered. Let's take a look at this. And this is the model, essentially, for the um, three peaks and a domed house pattern. So it's you know pretty clear when you look at this what that is. I mean, you can see that uh, there are essentially three peaks right in here. One, two, three. They have all of these moves labeled. Uh, 
I'm going to show you some less labeling uh, when you look at that. So there's your three peaks, and here is your domed house pattern. Now, it's not really clear. Is this the domed house where those are the domes and this is the house, or is this the domed house up here? Never was sure about that when I look at it, but that's the famous three peaks in a domed house pattern. Let's see uh, how that looked uh, when they were uh, looking at it in 1929. So here is 1929, Three Peaks in a Domed House. Scary, huh? Because that's the pattern that uh, George Lindsay uh, discovered. And there you could see it pretty clearly when you look at that, right? This one's really clear. One, two, three peaks and your domed house in here. Or is this the domed house? That's that question I keep asking. But there you see it's pretty clear when you look at that. And then, of course, what did that bring? Well, it brought the, ca the crash of 29, 49% decline. Well, in just a matter of days uh, when you look at that. So you think it's a pretty rare pattern, but that did happen again. As a matter of fact, here is 1987. Well, wait a minute. I just showed you that chart, right? 1929. Let's go back. There's the 1929 chart I just showed you. Here's the 1987 chart. Well, it's pretty scary. It's identical, right? I always remember I was sitting in a bar with some friend one uh, day uh, at the Mercantile Exchange talking about this. His name was George, also, interestingly, and had this, uh, we were talking about it, and I know George remembers that pretty clearly because we discussed it. And here's your one, two, three peaks and your domed house, 1987 and the huge crash of 87. So you could see the big break right there. So now let's look at one more chart. And here is 2017. Is this three peaks in a domed house? Well, that's what the case that you know Donna brought to me and uh, that uh, Jeff Hirsch is talking about. There's your three peaks. Is this your domed house right in here forming? If that's the case, that could be a lot of trouble because that would be the same pattern. And well, what would that look like if you overlaid the, the, the model of that on this chart? And you could see, well, well, there's the model again, right? So I want you to remember what that looks like. And here is what we're doing right now. This is 2016, 2017. And there is your three peaks right over here. This would be your domed house right over here, right? And that then is sets up this pattern here if they're right and you get a big break. All you would have to do is break under these recent lows at around 23.22 on the S&P 500. And uh, that would then um, satisfy that whole um, uh, pattern and say that, well, maybe it's happening again. Well, I wanted to share that with you. Um, if you uh, follow uh, me, you follow the analysis that I have recently done, uh, then you would know that I, I've been talking about a correction coming in the market, that I think we're in a top formation right now, and that uh, might be a little while, could be a little more complex. Uh, and that uh, I said 2,000 points in the downside. Well, if uh, Jeff is Jeff Hirsch is right, well, that would be like 4,000 points if it's about 20%. I was being conservative when I said uh, 2,000 points on the downside. So uh, that uh, is, you know, uh, uh, something that I think uh, you could think about whether or not uh, that is um, a possibility. And uh, when I think about the weakness in the commodity markets and uh, when I think about um, the movement into the flight to safety things, I kind of wonder this big plunge, plunge in iron ore, uh, the, the uh, weakness 65 cents down in silver on the week. What is that all saying? Well, maybe there's something to this. Maybe it's something we're thinking about. Maybe there's some adjustment that you want to make in your overall portfolio. If you want to see that video that I did become a level one member and uh, we've put it into a, uh, we've made it free now uh, on uh, my big picture analysis on the stock market. Highly technical, lots of cycle stuff and some good information that backs up uh, the fundamentals that could be uh, bringing us to that 
type of decline. So become a, a level one member, uh, it's no cost, uh, and you'll be able to see that video. Talk a little bit more about that uh, a little bit later on in the show. Let's take a look now at uh, what uh, happened this week in the stock market as we look at our 60-minute uh, chart of the S&P 500. And uh, let me put that up for you right there. So we do this every week. We uh, have the gray area right there, which is the S and uh, is the S&P 500 e-mini trading uh, overnight market, and the white area is during the day. Uh, Monday was a strong day. You can see that right there. Uh, the Good Friday economic reports came out, and then the market kind of reacted and a little bit soft overnight. But then you see it got a pretty good rally. Uh, China they come out with stronger economic growth, and I think that helped the market uh, move up uh, all day long on uh, Monday. Tuesday, uh, the markets tried to open strong. Um, this was uh, as the British pound explodes to the upside uh, on the news that um, Prime Minister May in the UK called for a snap election. She wants to get control of this Brexit. And that means she thought if she could do the snap election and weaken the rest of Parliament that's standing in her way, that it would uh, help her a lot. The iron ore uh, plunges 5%, and that really kills the uh, mining stocks, and that really leads the stuff to the downside. In here, Australia moves down 1% on, on the mining uh, stocks. Also, uh, as Asia was also lower, uh, Hang Seng down 1.4%. So, um, But uh, the, the bond market had a, a good up move side in here. And uh, gold uh, is up, but silver really lags with copper lower that day. Uh, on uh, You could see what happens here on Wednesday. The markets opened up, but then gave it up. And this was the big down day in here. Uh, as IBM uh, drops 5% as they have the big sales miss, uh, and uh, Russian bombers, uh, they're buzzing Alaska. They actually did it four times uh, recently, and that has uh, got people nervous in there. Friday, this is the big day Thursday. I mean, this is when they had a big up move in here. Uh, France was up seven tenths of a percent ahead of the election. Jobless claims really strong at a 17 year low, and the steels moved up, and miners, as they moved up, as the president came out and issues an executive order to investigate steel imports. So that pushed the market up right over here, and then then Treasury Secretary Mnuchin says over here that tax reform is close and that pushes it up right over there and you could see that really pushed the market up. And uh, just a little tidbit here, Bill O'Reilly is, well, ousted from Fox. He's going to get $25 million goodbye. So that's uh, not a bad payday for uh, getting uh, pushed out. And uh, i got to tell you the truth, I'll miss him. He was a uh, 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 not supporting or anything that happened uh, with all of these settlements that he's had to make uh, and uh, basically saying that I think he was a really, really great um, news guy and uh, I'll be sorry to see him go. Here is the uh, Friday look right over here and you could see Friday, there was a big swoon right over here. I was looking for the news as S&Ps got down about 11 but then they rebounded as you can see in here. The CAC 40, that's the CAC 40 uh, in France, is uh, down uh, about seven tenths as the French election looms. There are 11 candidates running. There are only really three that are in the running right in here. A leftist, uh, socialist guy, uh, Macron, who is the middle guy, middle left, and Le Pen, who's way, way off on the right. Uh, that's uh, tough on immigration, uh, tough on the EU, all of those things. And they're the one. She's the one that everybody's afraid of. And of course, there was a terrorist attack. It's another sad thing, and uh, that they think are going to push people voting for. Le Pen, who's really in charge, uh, wants us much stronger border control. And Paul Tudor Jones analyst comes out and says a significant drop is likely to be coming soon in the stock market. Maybe that had something to do with the swoon we had during the day, uh, but that is what happened during the week. As you could see, a pretty choppy week as the market does manage to put on uh, gains for the week. Let's take a look now as we look at our uh, economic calendar. Get this uh, put in place for you so you could see it uh, somewhere in here. <laughs> uh, and uh, there, I got it. 
Here's your economic calendar. And uh, you could see that, well, earnings are really uh, going to start pouring out this week. And uh, that, uh, I, I can't even read them. I mean, there's so many here. Just take a picture of this and uh, hang it up at your computer because uh, it's just going to be pouring out all week long. A lot of just tons of uh, important earnings. And remember, these are all out of our 320 stock trading universe that we have, which are the widely held. So uh, these are mostly the really important um, uh, different uh, earnings reports that you know people watch pretty closely. Economic events, uh, none of the giant ones uh, are coming out this week, but you could see what we have in there. Uh, as uh, the maybe the big one might be on Friday for the bond market, the employment cost index, where uh, everybody is waiting to see uh, when we're going to start to get some employment inflation. So uh, that is uh, a look at uh, the. Um, uh, uh, calendar for the week and uh, hopefully uh, you'll make some pretty good earnings plays in there as we come to the next week. All right, that is uh, the opening segment. Hope there was something in there for you and uh, we're going to be right back with the best and the worst for the week. All right, so every week what we do is we look at the um, stocks that had the biggest moves uh, for the week. Uh, those are usually earnings reports, though there's often something that there was some pretty important corporate news coming out, and uh, that's probably going to be the case in a lot of these bigger movers. Uh, let me put up the uh, chart of the uh, uh, weekly and the daily. Um, we always do this uh, where we look at our cyclical analysis on the left side of the chart and, uh, and then we look at the the daily analysis on the right side so it's weekly and daily when we put up this two-sided grid in case you are not familiar with uh, how we do this. So here is that chart uh, of the um, biggest mover for the week that is SSYS, Stratasys. So Stratasys, uh, of course, is a 3D printer, and you'll see that right here as we look at the chart. So uh, here is the weekly pattern that we're looking at. And um, you'll notice in here, uh, if the first time you've ever seen this, this is our cyclical analysis. On the bottom are the cycle brackets. Those are our guides to help us find repeating lows and cycle rhythms, the upside and the downside waves in the market, as you can see right there. And uh, you can see how that timing works right in here and that it was ready to move up, and that was pretty nice timing. This one up 14%. Piper Jaffrey um, really sees value in this stock. They have raised the target to $28. It's now 24 and that really gave the stock a lift. Um, i got to tell you, I've got some doubts about this. Uh, the 3D printer market world has uh, had a really hard time. And uh, this, uh, un unless, you know, we heard some buyout rumors of GE looking at some of these companies, uh, and they've been trying to get into that market for a while, um, I don't really see how they're going to be able to um, really, uh, you know, grow this company or grow any of these companies in the 3D market. So that's a look at Stratasys. Airline stocks uh, moved up pretty nicely uh, this week. This is a very mixed group. Take a look at Hawaiian Airlines, though. This is a beautiful pattern. And again, you could see the cycle analysis in there as we have it drawn out. So these are the cycle brackets. These are actually the way the cycles um, uh, were up, or, you know, you could see the rising and declining phases, and you could see the bottoms, and I'm, I'm going to be able to do this a little more detail right now, but I won't do it the rest of the charts because I want you to see how we do this cycle analysis. So each of the rising phases, you can see right in here, brought big rallies, and now we're in the rising phase right now. Problem is, is that this right over here, this test of the low, that's a bad sign. When it gives up about 100% of the next one, usually this rally fails. So we're going to actually look for a rolling over in here. And if that's the case, you could see how a head and shoulders would form. Uh, we're getting a little bit ahead of it, but I want you to see how the cycle pattern actually forms the head and shoulders. And so uh, that had a big move uh, as it 
uh, was up 13% on a big earnings beat. Spirit Airlines, uh, which is SAVE, also in a nice pattern. Now, some of these other airlines are not in this nice of a pattern. And this one you could see is much better than what I just showed you in Hawaiian Airlines. Why is that? Well, because this cycle pattern, it only you know gave up about 40% of that and then stops the 34-week moving average and moves up. That makes the probability of a new recovery high at about three to one and that's not so much of a call since we've gotten uh, close to that anyway so uh, this stock eight percent on the week uh, that's a uh, guide they they get uh, upward uh, analyst uh, guidance and uh, upgrades as they are um, just ahead of earnings on 427 so uh, pretty uh, nice uh, up move in there and as I said this is a pretty mixed group the semiconductors uh, we're gonna look at a couple of these the first one is lamb research uh, LRCX up 11% on the week on a super bullish pattern uh, in their LRCX right there it goes man look at this pattern in here I mean uh, earnings a big beat analysts upgrade this stock and you could see in here uh, these oh, just incredible upward uh, cyclical patterns you can see this stair step upward move up the 13 week moving average right here just incredible and each of these patterns has just been uh, super strong and you can see how long each rally lasts which is just incredible we call these right hand translations and then this big explosion to the upside right there take a little closer look right here and you could see I mean I don't there's no way to know where the top is because this is like a uh, 52 week high and uh, I can't really project it but that's just a, an immense pattern and the analysts are loving this one Cypress up about 5% on the week that's CY and you could see the same type of bullish pattern in there as it's just uh, immensely powerful whenever you see these blue spikes in here it means we were projecting a time for the uh, corrective bottom uh, as you could see the timing was right in here and here and then right here lines up right in there and then turns up so this one likely to take out this 1498 level on what is a very very bullish pattern um, another uh, group that was strong this week this uh, could be based on the fact that uh, Donald Trump has been doing what he can to revive the coal industry, but uh, we have uh, CSX, the uh, railroad, making it to an all-time high. 8% gain in there, really solid. Uh, let's take a look at that CSX chart. And uh, you will see just uh, just a great pattern in here. But this one looks like these semiconductors, doesn't it? Uh, as uh, totally unrelated, right? But just a super powerful pattern. And this was the new rising zone, new rising phase, and uh, moves up to a new high, just as the probability said that it would get above that high based on the positive pattern. So earnings uh, really strong, and analysts upgrade this stock also. So great pattern as we look at that. The next one we're going to look at is STLD. I talked a lot about the steels this week, steel dynamics. This stock earnings beat. It's up 6% on the week, but the group is struggling. So when you see a pattern like this, this is to me still negative, and I would be very suspicious of this upside move that you see right now. So you could see we're in this downward trend right over here and see that cycle low we have it noted that it broke below that low and the low due over here sometime late in April. So I'm suspicious that this stock is going to trade lower in here and I see this whole group still being in trouble and the iron ore is significantly negative for this and that's uh, a problem. So this discussion that we had during the week Thursday of uh, the president um, investigating uh, steel dumping that got the short scrambling and I don't think they're done yet in there so that is steel dynamics take a look at retail they were we had some bounces in there that are interesting gap stores GPS now this is one uh, that looks like it's trying to make some kind of a bottom in there is it fell all the way down to well $17 from being over 40 and then you've got some 
some, well, decent cyclical patterns in here. We're not giving it a lot of credit. You know, maybe it could get up a little more in here and then pull back. I don't think there's any kind of a big move in here. Uh, but uh, they um, got upgraded by J.P. Morgan that uh, thinks that they're in better shape. And, you know, it's a little bit better pattern than they've been in. So we would tend to agree with that. Now, Whole Foods, WFM, this one gets a pop in here a pretty good significance look at that big upside move now i've been talking about this being a big base in here and that this base right here this cyclical pattern was forming and likely if we got above that downward trend we would have a good move yeah we got it we got this big upside move in there uh to the ups uh to uh a as a response uh, to some, uh, we'll say, buyout talk. I'm uh, kind of stammering on that one because I want to make sure I use the right language in that. Uh, there are rumors, let's put it that way. And uh, so the stock gets up to the top of the range up here or a little bit more. It's going to have to have something happen for it really good to uh, get much above that. But overall, we've got to say that we think the pattern has improved. One more stock that we're going to look at for the best of the week is Starbucks, SBUX. And here you can see this stock uh, as it gets up to an important level right there. Um, I just want to look at the daily chart in here really uh, quickly and uh, show you what we were looking at right over here on the daily chart. Now, um, we had looked at, first of all, a bottom that had formed right in here as it got massively oversold. That's our option bias telling us that uh, it was massively oversold there. Then it rallied and then when it got to the bottom of this cycle, we thought it was gonna bottom here and then move up. So we gave our uh, subscribers a long setup right at that point and man, that turned out to be spot on perfect. Starbucks analysts upgrade that one and uh, we actually were ahead of them. So uh, as you can see, Starbucks putting on a better pass Pattern. Question is, um, can they get the international growth that they're hoping for to be able to keep that going? Uh, I, I have some doubts about that. And in the meantime, the pattern is pretty good, and I'm glad we caught it. That's the best of the week. Here comes the worst. All right, for the worst of the week, um, the worst stock is Cardinal Health. CAH put this stock up for you to see. It's a stock down 11% on the week on a big downside gap. Let's take a look at this chart pattern. And uh, here is uh, CAH. And so if you've you know learned anything about the cyclical analysis that we do, you can probably see that this decline right in here is in alignment with this time period over here. It's a little bit late. That does happen, and usually when it's late on a decline, it's because it's negative. Uh, and uh, the decline extends out a little bit further, and uh, you can see here a nice engulfing pattern right there that made that top, and uh, big move to the downside. And the decline, the period for decline, is likely ending in there. And so we're gonna be look for a bounce. However, when you look at this, you can see this big downside gap, and. Uh, all this trading down here, if we get a bounce, maybe we get up into the slim ribbon over here. Note that the downside momentum has turned negative. That's that arrow right over there. So if we got a bounce in there, probably 7677, uh, and then we think it would move back to the downside. They're buying Metatronic's uh, portfolio, and that raised a lot of questions about their debt levels. They guided lower. Analysts uh, have downgraded them, and we're going to look for a bounce in there that does not hold in Cardinal Health. There's the big down week. Uh, the drillers had a really bad week in there, and we'll take a look at Neighbor, NBR. Uh, this one down 9% on the week. Now, the energy complex had a really bad week. And of course, when we see oil plunging over 4% on the week, that's pretty significant. Now, you could see the way we have this pattern projected. This is a very negative scenario right here. If it rallied above this level, well, it would rescue itself, but it would have to do it in the next couple weeks, and I just don't see the scenario for that to happen. 
If anything, it looks like this is the scenario where you had a diminished rally right in here. We'll call that a left-hand translation. The rally coming where it was supposed to, but then breaks down under that level. That's a horrible pattern when you see that, and it makes the odds very, uh, I would say, nearly certain that we have a very long period of decline coming. Now here's a similar spot right over here where it did that. And then you had all that decline right over there. So this is a bad pattern in neighbor. Uh, most of this energy complex is giving just horrible patterns and n n no uh, no earnings to report yet. They're going to be coming out soon, uh, but that's really a bad one. Look at uh, the next one, uh, NOV, National Oil. Um, this one uh, breaks underneath that key level again, and you can see that looks uh, horrible. That's down 8% on the week. Take a look at the daily pattern in here, and you can see momentum having turned negative, and this is after getting all the support on the 89-day uh, moving average and then breaking under it. The red arrow gives you negative momentum breaking under the moving average, and that's a horrible look right there. And uh, National Oil Well uh, deserves to be on the worst of the week. Uh, Noble Corp down about 6%, Schlumberger down 5%. Let's take a look at that SLB chart, and you can see right in here, there's that same ugly pattern, and you can see how we have it projected down uh, right there as uh, th this is kind of a shocking break in here. Oil had looked so good and then just absolutely comes apart. Uh, so we're looking at some pretty bad scenarios here uh, when we look at that. Let's stay in the energy category for a second and look at APA. Here's another breakdown going on right there in these patterns. And you could see the in this bigger pattern, we happen to have the uh, enveloping on the uh, big patterns right in here. So this is your downtrend going on. And you can see in here is it established an uptrend. You see these cycles right in here? The reason they're dotted is because we want to tell our subscribers that we just put that particular cycle in there so because it uh, became really clear so what would that look like well here's that first cycle here's the second cycle you see that clearly here's the next one as we have it marked off and then this one right in here and then this rally that failed broke this level and turns it negative you get this when you have the big pattern like this turning down and that's why this isn't a surprise and it is a very negative pattern chesapeake down five percent on the week amarada has down five percent on the week let's just call it Hess. amarada is the old name man that is me uh, as a, a dinosaur kind of stuck in the 70s and 80s as a pit trader using that old name so you can see those energies really really changing and turning to the downside uh, other than conical phillips cop i mean exxon looking week uh, marathon looking week chevron uh, chevron looking week there's just so many of them I wonder if there's a message there about oil. We've gotten kind of whipsawed on our oil analysis uh, as uh, we saw it as negative and then it came up and tested the highs, but now it's really in free fall again. So we wonder if our original analysis was correct. So I'm going to have to work hard to figure that one out. Now, okay, now let's take a look at a few more stocks. Silver, like I said, was down 65 cents on the week. That is a really significant uh, drop. So the silver stocks take a hit. Hecla down about 8% uh, on the week. Now, most of these are still in rising patterns. Uh, but they're going to have to pick their heads up uh, in here to get saved. Uh, and not get some breakdowns. Take a look here at this uh, Hecla pattern, HL. There's uh, the rising channel that it's in right there in the what we call the rising phase. So that's this rising phase. Note the rising phases and how they brought you these rallies. Now this one uh, looks like because of silver it might be rolling over, but it's still okay. It's still in that rising phase. So we're not going to panic on that one yet, but down 8% on the week. Uh, First Majestic AG, you can see a very similar pattern in there. This is a dark cloud cover, and that's uh, worrisome when you see that. 
that they're about to give it up. And uh, PAAS, uh, you can see that right in here, uh, which is, uh, we have this colored phasing in here so that you can see these uh, positive and corrective phases. And it's still in the positive phase, but that's a dark cloud cover also. And usually these cell patterns are good in here. As a matter of fact, you could see a perfect evening star here that brought that decline, a perfect evening star here that brought that decline, a dark cloud cover right over here, and here's that dark cloud cover right here. We gotta wonder if it's turning over and uh, whether or not uh, the silver break is the beginning of something and again, we're concerned uh, about the possibility of economic weakness out there. And uh, maybe the uh, Trump agenda failure recession. Is that possible? Is that what all these um, breakdowns uh, and weakness that we're seeing in commodities and oil, is that what it all means? Let's take a look at a couple more stocks in here. We'll look at PM, uh, which is Philip Morris. This has got a top forming in there. Uh, take a look at the weekly pattern. And this one, they missed on earnings and uh, the stock rolls over. As you could see right over here, we have it falling for another couple of weeks. It had this giant move in here. Look how pretty this head and shoulders was right over here. And uh, com comes down perfectly to the measurement or a little below it and then gets that big rally that we can see. I want to look at the daily chart because this is uh, a interesting chart. So let's Let's just look at where the momentum started to turn up. We used uh, several different momentum indicators here at Ask Slim. Uh, we use the hull moving average as one. Um, we use the um, uh, MOBO breakout bands, momentum breakout bands, and the slim ribbons. So this is the slim ribbons, which you usually see on here. And uh, you can get the slim ribbons for your TOS platform just by coming to our website and go to resources, and we have it there for you. The, um, this is where it turned up, and you can see all of this time period where it was positive. All of the volume bars are green because it was positive. Here's your evening star pattern right over here and the downside gap. This is a breakaway downside gap uh, on high volume. Uh, and uh, now you can see that arrow right there as it lost its upside momentum. And that is significant. And if you're a holder of Philip Morris, this stocks to me look like a major top is being put in place there. Let's take a look at IBM, which had this major break in here to the downside. It comes down and breaks underneath the 61.8, but this is the time period we expected the low to occur. So we're going to guess that some low occurs in here. You get some crummy rally, and then it moves significantly lower again uh, into the summertime. Of course, we think there's a major stock market correction into the summertime. Of course, this is the worst of the week when we're looking at these stocks. And one of the worst of the week stock uh, patterns was only down 2% on the week. Uh, I wanted to bring it to you because I like to bring something that I think has got opportunity that didn't happen yet. I think Netflix is making a big top. And uh, when you look at this pattern, I'm going to do some bigger cycle analysis for you to see. You can see. So this has got a little more involved cycle analysis on it. Um, I have to move this out to a 10-year chart to get the proper cycle alignments that you could see right there. So there are three large cycles that you can see right there. Each of them made up of three parts. Okay, so you can see there's uh, this big cycle right here, and it's made up of the three smaller cycles that you can see right here. Here is this big one right over here, made up of three smaller cycles. What do we have right now? Well, we have this dotted line shows you the big pattern, and that shows a decline out here into June, okay, or possibly a little bit longer. That says that there's a potential that there's a big top forming in here. Let's get this lined up for you to see. And you could see there are one cycle right in here, pretty. Two cycles right in here, bullish, right? Nice. The rally and already threatening the low, as you can see right here. That says the odds are very high that what you're doing is making a top in here. This could be a head and shoulders that forms, or it could just be coming down and breaking this low. This pattern in here with this big 
pushing down of nested cycles over this next, we'll call it about six weeks, says that there is a lot of risk in here in Netflix. We think there's going to be a big break to the downside in Netflix. Here is this pattern in here, and there is a very negative pattern shaping up in here. So you could see again, this is the daily chart. There's your big cycle right here and here and here very clear right you can see all three of them here is your half cycles and you can see this one right here this one right here this one right here and this little rally and after that's over with wham we think that there's a big decline coming out into may june in netflix wanted to show you that just so that we could share something that we thought was going to be very actionable and uh, that is something that I think is important to look at. So uh, that is Netflix. And uh, we're going to bring you right now our short-term view for the coming week. All right, we do this every week. We take a look at the short-term view for the coming week. Before I do that, just want to tell you quickly, I mentioned in the beginning of the show that uh, I had done a, a video talking about the scenario for a correction in the stock market. Big picture analysis, 2,000 points down in the Dow. And uh, if you want to see that, we've now put a special section in our um, level one membership uh, and we've added three bonus members uh, videos in there that you can see that I think will be very helpful for your trading all you have to do is go to ask slim become a level one member we don't take your credit card for that we'll never share your private information so it's safe to do and uh, you'll be able to see those videos so if you're curious also if you uh, want to get our uh, rankings and trade setups uh, which we update every single day uh, I think that it's of great value, plus all of our member videos. If you're interested in that, uh, then you'd want a level three membership, and I'll let you try it out for a month for half price, just 43 bucks, a whole month of all of our rankings of the top traded stocks, uh, our option bias rankings, which are incredible. I think you'll really love that if you're an option trader or a short-term swing trader and uh, uh, all of our 200 plus videos that I have put up there to improve your odds of uh, being successful in the market. So uh, I think that uh, you will really enjoy that. So let's take a look now as we look at our short term view for the coming week like I do uh, every single week. By the way, if you want that half price uh, membership, uh, just send me an email, slim at slim.com. I'll send you the link for that. I almost forgot to tell you that, I think. So let's take a look here as we look at the S&P 500. Um, what we had expected was that it would get down to approximately, now I did this recording with about uh, an hour and a half to go on Friday, and I thought it would get down to um, about uh, in the beginning of the week, beginning to the middle of the week uh, on the S&P 500, 2334. Uh, and I said if it broke below 2322, that would be a really bad scenario. And I didn't think that was going to happen. Well, it turns out that it exactly came down and tested the number I was looking at right on the close on Friday, right after I did this show, and then danced around it a little bit at the end of last week and then turned up. We thought it would be soft into the middle of the week and then rally, and that is pretty much exactly what we got in the market. So uh, we're going to call that a good call for the stock market during the week. So you can see in here the patterns that we're looking at. So these are very important. You see the 20-day low here. Here, a 17 day low here, a 20 day low here. You can see that. That's these patterns right in here. And those are generally made up of, you know, half patterns. And you can see that right in here. The half patterns run around nine or 10 days. This gets a little confusing here this week because we got this big Thursday rally. Let's get a little closer look right here. And that um, puts in question whether or not this whole pattern is completed. It probably is. But you know we have this uh, uh, this French election coming out. There could be a pretty good big move uh, overnight on Sunday or Monday, and if uh, Marine Le Pen looks like she's really strong, then the euro currency is going to get clobbered. And that could scare the European markets and send our markets down. So we're actually looking for this week 
uh, to um, be in, we're going to call it a range. Now, the range right up here, this kind of high around the 2360 area, and this support area of this uh, low right around the 2328 to 2334 area right there. So we're going to look for that range in there to kind of hold this week. If we get some really bad news Monday morning and we get the big break, then I don't think that that decline will stay down very long, and I think it would move back up. That's this pattern right in here. Right now, we're believing that it kind of made an early low in here and is starting to move up. So it's kind of ambiguous. We seem to be getting pressure from both sides. In other words, the supports in here lifting up, and then this pattern starting to lift up here. And overall, this downward trend that we're looking at right in here holding it. So that's why we think it's going to be kind of a tight range this week, not giving us a lot. But overall, if we had to make if we have to talk about the risks, we think the risks are to the downside because we think we're getting into that corrective period. So below 2328, and it's a warning. And below 23.22, this uh, minor support level right there, which is that last low, that is bad. If we get underneath that level right over there, that support, that's going to be ugly, and it's going to have a really bad message in there. So we're going to be watching that carefully. We're going to call a range-bound week in here. And... Uh, that being, uh, uh, if that is true, then it's overall going to be much more of a negative scenario going forward. So uh, I could probably now, you know, when I think about that, uh, make the uh, odds that it's like that would be two to one that um, the odds are that overall the risk is to the downside because we look like we can get some modest upside move. But if it breaks down underneath that level, it's really significant. So modest up, significant down is really where this market looks. And we're going to uh, start to think that uh, uh, if we can't make any significant upside past that 2360 number in the S&P 500 uh, early on in the week, if everything um, is okay and we don't get a big crack from the French election, uh, then we're going to even be more sure that this commodity weakness that we're looking at is meaningful and that uh, there's something out there that nobody really knows that's causing this uh, w underlying weakness in so many markets that we think is going to uh, bleed over into the stock market. Hope you found that piece that we did interesting on the Three Peaks and the Domed House. Always want to uh, get your uh, comments uh, and uh, make sure on YouTube that uh, you um, click a thumbs up. Uh, hope you love the show. And uh, we're always wishing you great trading. Well, I'm going to the center and I'm going to